Hey folks, before we get into today's video, I'd like to remind you of a couple things. First and foremost, this is a video on YouTube. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You can see the thing up there it tells you what to do it and helps me a lot. And also, I stream on Twitch every Monday for EPT Cups, every Saturday for the Apprentice Cups, and for EBT Korea. So make sure to go check me out there, twitch.tv slash payable as you just saw. But for now, let's get into Keen versus Clem. In the bottom right, in the red, he is the victor over chance from Team Liquid, the little corporal, Clem. His opponent in the upper left, in the blue, the Kwangdong Freaks, the source of countless glorious memes. He is Keen. And poor Gemini, very upset that Keen is, or that the Kwangdong, or that the Afrika Freaks became the Kwangdong Freaks. It changed their entire color palette from this nice, pleasing blue, which I was a big fan of, to this orange. So Gemini has all this nice blue Afrika stuff, and I was like, ah, in your face, orange, let's go. Although, I mean, in all fairness, uh, the jersey that Trap was wearing at IEM was rather, in fact, pretty much all the jerseys were really good this year. It, it, gone are the days of esports jerseys being kind of eh. There's enough thought behind them now that people are starting to realize that, eh, okay, this should, our players should look good in what we give them. And in fairness, also, people have started to realize that just sitting in a chair and gaming for 18 hours a day is not the best way to perform. You need to have balance in your life. You need to see the sun. You need to work out, have it, eat healthily. All of these sleep enough. All of these things will massively contribute to your performance. Hmm. Hey, Stole Train 69. I, I am honored that you thought I did well enough at Katowice that you chose to come to my channel for a EPT Weekly Cup. <laughs> Clem, he goes for the. It's not a block. It's just a scout. But it is kind of funny to see. But Stole Train again. I'm honored that you you thought I did well enough at Katowice that you've come to check out my channel. I really do appreciate it. Um. Again, that just puts a smile on my face. I can stop trying to steal your wife while I'm... Eh, I'm sorry about that, corn muscles. See, I'm not actively trying to steal your wife, but if you if I'm passively stealing your wife, well, that's something you're going to have to deal with. That's not my fault. We should probably talk about the game for a little bit, but unfortunately, folks, this game is as mirrored as mirrored can be. It was... Barracks into, fa into Double Gas, into Factory, into Command Center. That build that we've seen time and time and time again, except not in Katowice, actually. That was the really interesting thing. We saw a lot of Reaper expands and gas first and things that theoretically this build is supposed to solve all of. But that, the thing actually, I was very surprised. We saw a lot of Reaper expand. We saw a lot of paired Reaper expands as well. And I can understand one player looking for an eco elite. They say, yes, I'm going to go Reaper expand versus your delayed expand. And if you don't punish me, I'm going to be in a really good spot because maybe we can expect players to be a little bit more conservative when there is, what is it, $600,000 on the line. But look, this build, absolutely identical. Keen, of course, he's a little bit faster to it. His drop is a little bit quicker on the other side of the map, but the, the drops are going to scout each other. And Clem, he's just going to boost right on through. Both players know what is happening. Both players are going to be posturing for the defense. Cyclone and two Marines in the main base going to look for the lock on there. So Keen will not find it too much. But Clem runs into the natural, which means the Cyclone is actually not going to get a lock on. Clem has much more damage potential right now. But the Widowmine is still something you got to worry about. Reaper actually going to... Oh, Clem! That was sexy as hell! Look at that. He saves the Reaper from the Widowmine shot. Now it's not going to do too much. But that was freaking... Uh, mm. Clem is just a guy. That is ridiculous. That is unacceptable and now it means that uh, a marine is gonna have to get traded i'm sitting here talking about this and saying well okay it makes sense clem is going to sacrifice the reaper it's not all that useful 
And then maybe he's going to get some friendly fire. But Clem says, no, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to boost my medevac forward. I'm going to keep the Reaper alive. And that's just going to be a little bit more fighting force available to me. Although at the end of the day, he's lost a couple of Marines. A couple, one more SCV, two more SCVs. It's not all that different. In fact, Clem has lost more. But it was still sick. Still sick as hell. Sick nerd baller, to use the old IEM nomenclature back when they used to give the uh, the player with the, the most sick nerd... Uh, not necessarily the best performance, because that would just be another championship. Or that would be another first place prize. But the player who had the best story, who did the coolest thing at the previous IEM, would be awarded the sick nerd baller award at the next one where they would get fancy sh custom shoes still not why sh still not sure why they they would give them shoes but they would give them decorated shoes so spider hyun got got his shoes and um is i am sao paulo and i really wish having three iems a year they were just so cool i miss having global events on it like back in the days when starcraft was a much bigger esport those global events were just so sick. Especially ones when it was like, yeah, we're going to go to Sao Paulo. Uh, as the Banshee finds value here, the Ravens are going to drop an auto turret, but Banshee is, is fast and can just run. That means less energy for the ensuing pushes. Clem is just finding value. Second auto turret gets dropped, and again, the Banshee survives. Raven's starting to... Well, the one Raven actually has zero energy. One Raven has enough for maybe one disable. Yeah, someone, I hope someone clipped that and put that to Reddit because that was sick. That was so cool. I know Clum can't run too far forward because it is three, th three tanks to three. Cyclone's going to try to get a lock on on top of the medevac and Scan's actually going to get dropped, man. Lock on just is forever. Range is, th that's the technical term for the range. It is just forever. And Clem is starting to find the smallest of leads in this game because we have to remember... Uh, this is a game where both players are doing identical builds, but Clem, his stim is going to be faster. He has a worker lead right now. His army is equal. So because of the damage he's found with his Banshee, he, he is ahead in a game where everything else is being equal, which is a great, great position for him to be. Now we're going to see Keen go for a drop on the other side and immediately, <laughs> immediately the command center drops, immediately takes a shot, immediately it starts lifting back up again. This hell is going to try to find value in the third, but really it is just a scout. Clem knows where everything is. Now he's got to drop in the main base. Stim is done. So we can get on top of the Cyclone. Cause some problems. Maybe there we go. The Cyclone is dead. Widow Mine is not going to kill much of anything. It's going to get like one Marine. And while this medevac is not long for this world, another couple workers will go down. Even though, he's not going to get too much done either. And Clem, is he going to move on forward? No, it looks like he will not. The Viking lead is significant now for keen it is we're looking at four to six and now that does mean that club is going to force backwards as the drop finds value in the third base keen for the first time in this game he actually finds value he actually starts to get damage but Rains are going to look to run on in scvs as well and that just means a couple more of them will die i mm, feel like you wait for the rally but mm, Clem had a thought to jump back on top of that army but clean what keen was well prepared for it There we go. Hey, Epic. Yeah, seasonal WCS for events were great, but I'm talking about back in the like hots when we had the regional uh, the regional IEM events. We had Sao Paulo in New York, and this drop is gonna get three, four SCVs. That should be it. Uh, we need something to kill this last Marine, please, but actually no, because Keen says, it's time for me to push my advantage right now so many F SCVs getting pulled I don't know that it was necessary quite yet to climb that's maybe a little bit too far away as the bio stims on top of the tank and Keen is just all of a sudden swarming everywhere the supplies are not different but the positioning is so much better but yeah epic back in the day we had these IEM events in Sao Paulo and New York and and Shanghai and Guangdong and Pyeongchang the Scarlet one all over the world and IEM has, was, has always just been a more prestigious tournament sure you had WCS and that was kind of the gold regional standard oh Clem you gotta be careful with these Vikings man um, and they were always the gold standard Dreamhacks were cool but IEM 
the best production value, the biggest events, the best casters, the biggest crowds. And the best storylines too. You had uh, Sao Paulo where Kelajur comes out of nowhere, takes the regional qualifier slot because that was one of the things that IEM would do where wherever it is, uh, they, would add, they would add a couple slots into the group stages for regional representatives. So Guang, uh, Guangdong and uh, Shanghai, they got uh, Chinese representatives. Brazil though, that was how Kelozer was found. Is uh, oh the Raven's gonna the disable on the Raven? That's actually really cool. This Raven is just going to go down. No, but the bio looks to stem on forward here from Keen. Trying to get the tanks as they are off a of cooldown. Calamity's looking for the break. There are so many tanks here, and nothing removes them. But even still, so many of the tanks of Clem will go down. It's not enough. Keen takes game one. In the bottom left, in the red down one for team liquid clem oh man epic go back and watch some of those old iem vods they're hype as hell they showed us what esports could be before we totally realized what it could be um, and you'll even see if you look at like the old SC2HL, the best of best StarCraft of X year VODs videos, um, you'll see footage from that. Anyways, in the upper right in the blue up one zero off some really good positioning he is the Kwangdong Freaks Keen. Sir Clem in game two says, ah, well, that was a little bit of a problem in game one. Maybe I shouldn't have gone as heavy macro as I did. Let me proxy some Reapers, but this is an interesting build. Uh, this is a Mark Sloppy build. You proxy one Reaper, one barracks across the map, but it is your second barracks and you build the barracks at home, which does prevent the SCV scout from learning just a little bit too much. Now, it looks like Keen here, he did go for the build that we've been talking about, which is of course, Barracks Double Gas Factory, which is a great way to hold off against a lot of things, but not against everything. So we're going to have to see whether Keen is properly positioned and properly ready to deal with the pressure that is soon to hit his side of the map. Command Center is going to be made on the low ground as Keen scouted out for the first level of proxy, but we'll not find the second. Actually, wait a minute. Climb, he's got the first shot here, which means this Reaper is going to go down. Oh, there we go. Okay. Reaper does stay alive, but the Reaper in the main base kills that one off and very rarely do we see this happen anymore but folks this may snowball it is two reapers to zero stvs causing problems the natural is not going to go up for quite a while a couple stvs will go down two more coming out at a time but we have reacted reapers coming out from keen so that should be able to equalize things reaper hops over the stv nice attempt at a body block but will not happen and this is not a pure proxy two rex reaper it is the key thing here it's only proxied one. One is at home, which means it's, it's just a little bit harder to snowball. So the Reapers from Keen will be out. Hellions are out as well. It, it Clem found value and he got himself an edge. But it's not nearly as problematic as it used to be where, oh no, your Reaper lost the first shot. You may be losing the game right now. That being said, five Reapers is a lot of Reapers. Or six Reapers, actually. Where's the sixth? Six Reaper joining. I remember six Reapers, one shot STVs. As uh, Keen looks to run across the map here, we're going to have a really interesting game state in a second. Thumb Scouts in says, okay, I don't see much of anything. Let me dive on top here. We're going to have to see the ramp go up, but uh, Reapers, they can go over that. So Hellions in the natural, Reapers in the main. In fact, they're just going to target the, the supply depot down. There's not a lot there. Uh, meanwhile, oh, this is actually really big. The natural for Key, for Clem is going to be denied for just about forever. 
Uh, but there's less damage. It's harder to break in. Tanks are out, though, which means they're... this is actually going to work out a lot better for Keen in this game. Clem, he's running home, but there are Reapers in his main base. And sure, four is effectively three, but still, that doesn't mean the two-shot STVs. And you add in just a little bit of KDE charge, and life gets even more complicated. Seven, eight, nine, ten. It's just going to be a lot of dead economy for Clem out of a game where he started out proxied. And he tried to make a count, tried to find value, was not able to do so. Eventually, these Reapers die, but not before 14 SCVs die. And hey, the natural way far behind. Oh, yeah, Corn Muscles. That was actually before I got into StarCraft. MLGs were petering out right around the time that I really got invested. That's okay. <laughs> Keen will find this. He says, okay, well, let me at least drop the Cyclone, find some value. But there's a Cyclone for uh, for Keen here, or for Clem here now, too. And that's lock-on does mean they all will get out, but the medevac is dead, which means this entire army is dead. Maybe it can trade for itself. I mean, I'd say that the Jadong did great starcraft 2 was he winning every championship no but he he, he conged it up and i i know it, it really hurts psychologically but rationally i think you'd rather get second place in literally every tournament uh if we want to talk about overall performance uh, than winning one and like bombing out in top eight or, or not bombing out but dropping on top eight and others would be the logic i think that's the i mean i don't know how the pri i can't remember how the prize pools were set up um that may not have been as good but i mean jadong was dominant in starcraft 2 just uh couldn't win championships and man failing to win blizzcon in what was that 2014 2015 something like, something like that um against sos was just heartbreaking he had that great run. He knocked down Deer, the Royal Rotor, who had just who had Royal Roted twice, who had won the GSL and the Global Finals earlier that year. With that incredibly sick Unburrow play, I mean, are they just be quite. Oh, the hell! Ah, <laughs> oh, the Reapers. They're so dead. Oh my. Tanks are going to be tanks. That is painful there. Now, the, the moderate supply lead that Clem had only because he had more army. Uh, or the supply quality only because Clem had more army. It's not really there anymore. Keen's going to scan things out and say, okay, I don't see a third base on the way. I know this is, this is all in because I, I don't think you have the money to go take your third base on location. Just send a marine out anyway. Okay, he's just going to take the watchtower. But okay, but there's th there are three Ravens here for Clem. And that absolutely is a breakable position considering there are only three Siege Dub tanks. Uh, yeah, Keen says, oh, you're scanning. Yeah, yeah, mm, mm, mm. SCV's pre-pulled. We already see the tanks. They're not exactly, uh, now they're sieged on up. But oh, Clem, he's got the first Siege up here. Will he be able to break Keen? It looks like that answer is going to be yes actually all the tanks are going on down clem he's crushing on through seven stvs falling the ravens they got to be careful on the back side looks like cub marines only one tank survived from that push so while clem does break keen and while he does push his way into the third base location keen continues to have valuable advantages in this game he has stim done the combat shields are on the way one one just about done he's got a lot more money so Clem brushed through. He crushed through, but not enough. So now things back up just a little bit. Clem's going to maybe find another position, but he needs to develop his tech more. Stim is on the way, but I'm just a little bit worried about the counterpunch that Keen has on the way. At the very least, this third base will not be allowed to get to complete here. Stim actually is not going to be allowed to complete either. So Stim is going to be delayed yet further. And we're going to see combat shields go down as well. Of course, Keen does not know exactly which one is which, but it's good enough. And that says, ah, I've delayed your third. I've delayed your tech. That's good enough for me.
I mean, corn muscles, I would take away some of those carrots because Flash will actually won a tournament. <laughs> Flash had, even in StarCraft 2, he had the best pro league record of anyone. I'm talking about purely StarCraft 2. And he had that one summer before he moved back to Brood War where he was winning everything. He finally figured it out. He won... Uh, I, uh, he won IEM, Mon IEM Montreal, DreamHack Montreal, as we're going to see this push happening over here from Keen. It's just a distraction from the push in the main base, but it looks like he's going to try kind of make that fight happen. The uh, one tank will be evacuated. Second tank should be evacuated as well. Clint going for four Ravens is a lot of Ravens. Meanwhile, this drop is finding tremendous value in the main base, keeping Clem effectively on one base for now. I'm pretty sure that was an IEM, actually. The Vikings are going to get landed. SCB is getting pulled, trying to make something happen here. But so many workers are going down. It's 1-1 one, one bio versus 0-0. Zero, zero. So this entire mineral line is kaput. It is dead. And sure, we have a disable on some of these tanks. Orange, <laughs> the orange is going to get painted on this army as well. But uh, superior upgrades and superior upgrades. GG, Clem, he falls. Keen, 2-0. In the bottom right, in the red. He's down two for Team Liquid. Looking to make a comeback, taking us to game number five. Maybe he is Clem. In the upper left, in the blue. He's up two, playing two fantastic GBTs. The Kwong Dong Freaks. Keen. Yeah, you, you, I guess you maybe stopped watching before Flash figured it out. Because he had that one glorious summer where he was either winning or placing highly in literally everything. And I, you just hear that the, the buzz was, oh, Flash has figured out StarCraft 2. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> What's the point anymore? But no proxies this game. Nothing too crazy. Just the standard build from both sides. So where do we go from here? Both players, again, they're doing the exact same thing. Although Clem, as we saw in game one, in this early game, he's doing a pretty good job of finding build order advantages. In this case, he's building his command center on the low ground. It means he will, again, have it on the low ground. He won't have to lift it over, which might buy him an SCV, half an SCV lead, just a little bit more mining. Not the biggest of deals, but StarCraft is a game of microns, folks. And there are a lot of microns between the main base and the natural. Other interesting things to note, it looks like Clem is maybe going to play a little bit more defensively this game as we see a Widowmine coming on out. Of course, that is not for Keen. In fact, in general, we're seeing the builds diverged by just a little bit more than we saw in game one. Game one was identical through the first five minutes. This one, not quite. The structures are similar and they are similarly timed, but that, we, that much we can expect because that, that's not all that weird. That, that, that we'll see most games. The question though is how exactly does Clem, do Keen, or do, do Clem and Keen look to use things? Look to find their value. So yeah, it's going to be about a one SCV lead uh, for Clem in this game because he took his command center on the low ground. His opponent did not. 
And with Ravens on the way, we don't know too much about things. But man, I gotta say, Keen's run. Taking it down Classic 2-0. I did not cast those games. Not see them. But Keen's run in this event is really good. It has been a significant surprise to me because Keen probably had the harder route. He had to take down Classic. He has to take down Clem here. And he had to take out one other player. Gumiho, maybe? No, Chance took out Gumiho. That's right. Anyway, the army of Keen running across the map right now. It is two Cyclones, three Reapers, a Hellion. And yeah, two Cyclones, three Reapers, a Hellion. And I think the goal here actually is just going to be to try to intercept a drop that Clem has been doing so often. It will be not successful. Not all that successful in that. Reapers... They're on the map as well, but Clem, again, this is not a damage move out so much as just a scouting, figuring things out. If they can get a couple STVs, that's going to be nice, but that's not really the goal. And they're going to get scouted anyways. It's okay, so a third base on the way for Keen. As these Reapers will, again, they, they will get find out, found out, excuse me. Uh, but okay, there we go. Raven auto turret in the natural. We'll get three workers. That's going to be something. And Keen should be able to knock down this supply depot if he wishes. I, the, with the Raven high ground vision, that'll be something. But again, sharking around, looking for value, trying to maybe snipe a Raven, snipe a tank if Clem looks to move out. But this is the most patient we've seen Clem play. That being said, the army is moving out now. Keen does not see it. Clem. We'll see that now. Okay, but the tanks are just not quite in range. Our SCVs are under attack. An auto turret in the natural once again. A couple more workers will go down. It should be three or four. Maybe a supply depot. Oh, he's going to force a supply depot. Apparently not. Supply depot does stay alive. Third base just about done for both sides. Clem is going to move his over. And actually, no, I'm sorry. Clem's got a big lead on that one, too. We're going to see the army look to move on out. Try to get good lock-ons on things, but it's just Marines, which means the Cyclones, they got to run. They're not going to kill these tanks. And Clem, he wants to prevent this third base from happening. So the scan goes down. Keen understands exactly what he is dealing with. It is two Ravens, a couple Vikings. The tanks are there, which means he can respond appropriately. And anyway, it's three Viking or three Ravens at two. We have one harassing Raven, two down. And folks, this is eight Raven or eight STVs that have died already. Despite that, Clem has equal economy, technically, but it does mean that the tech is eh, going to be maybe a little bit lacking for Clem at or at the moment. He looks to push on in and take his first map in this series again. The Cyclones are not going to be all that useful in the mid game, in the late game, but for now, they're going to be able to get on top of things. Deny mining at the third base for just a little bit and force Clem to make a decision. Does he go on the attack? Does he go on the defense? What does he do with this army that he has? But for now, it's going to be the tanks. They're going to siege on up. And grenades are actually going to get bumped here. So two more STVs, three more STVs. They will go down. And it looks like Clem is going to try to push in from the north side. But there's no command center that he's trying to deny. So no real reason to siege that up is Raven again. Dropping auto tourists. Man, Keen is just swarming in this game. Although... Tank should be able to deal with the Cyclone well enough. There we go. But still, S six SCVs have died. If you look at resources lost, it is not favoring Clem here. Is now the army looking to push on in. Tank siege on up. And you're not pushing into that one, Clem. 14 SCVs have died to zero. And somehow Clem still has an equal worker count. Power of going up a base, I guess. And now Keen looking to run across the map. And Clem, ideally, he looks to set this one off. Cut it off here. But no, Keen stimming on in the tanks. They get the first siege, which means absolutely not. You cannot make that one happen. One tank will go low, but that will be the end of things. And now Keen says, ah, okay. Well, now is my time to make something happen. Tank will be at disabled immediately. The bio looks to stim on forward. Auto turrets getting dropped. So this tank on the low ground, the defensive one, does get assassinated. Where are our Viking counts at? It is eight to seven as Keen looking to take the fight, looking to close out this series right now. And there we go, the armor shutter missile on top of all of these Vikings. It means Keen will be able to establish air dominance. And that is all that really matters in these early games. The Vikings are, yeah, they're just dying. That is not a fight that Clem wants to take. He's gonna lose them all, which means these Ravens are now under threat, under struggle. And the third base is gonna start to fall down as well. Now, nice move for Clem. 
he will be able to deny this one tank. In fact, it should just die. But remember, 1-1. One, one. Oh, no. Oh, never mind. It's just 1-1. One, one. Going armor first. Uh, but now 1-1 one, one is just about done for Keen. He has combat shields. These are things... Okay, Clem actually does have combat shields, but the 1-1, one, one, the big upgrades, are things that Clem absolutely lacks. Even still, as potentially good, as good as that looked, it looks like it's going to be a little bit more difficult for King to run on in, but no, he's going to siege up. He's going to lose a tank, but he's going to trade a tank for a tank, maybe for two. It looks like it's just going to be a tank for a tank. Not quite positioning where he needed to, to be out of range of things, but look at this. We got the Raven flank coming on in. Keen, he knows about it, though. That's a dead Raven. That's a second. Only one tank will be disabled. So this break from Clem is not going to work out nearly as well as he would have liked. Vikings shooting down everything in the skies. Yes, eventually, eventually, Clem will break this, but that was a far more expensive than it had any right to be. That being said, the Marines are going to be able to chase this down, and that does mean that a couple Ravens will die. Or a couple of Vikings will die, but man. Keen with the star sense. I don't think he saw that. Maybe he did, but even still, good positioning means that only one tank gets disabled. Now the Marines are going to look to run on in, try to chase this army down. Only one tank will be escaped. <laughs> oh, nice hot pickup there. In fact, he's going to be able to airlift every single one to safety, but this extra command center is, is doomed. Not going to be able to do too much. Now the tanks, they're sieged up, and that means the Marines cannot move too far in. But Keen has opened up a significant supply lead, significant upgrade lead too, even if it will equalize for a second. And the game does go on. Additional factors on the way for Keen as he gets his upgrades again further and forward, further forward. Our, oh no, Clem, he, his armor is behind as well. So even if he was able to, even if he was behind, he's not going to be able to maintain that deficit. It will just continue to grow and no tank upgrades either. So there is going to be a powerful timing where Keen, he has mech attack. He has what two, two versus the one, one on his bio. And he's going to have a significant supply lead as well. And that is the position that is most scary for Clem in this game. Now, if we look at leads, Clem does have a lot more tanks. It is eight to four, but he has no Vikings until right now, which is going to be a problem. Although that being said, Keen for the moment seems to have given up on air superiority instead moving back into medevacs giving him more mobility more utility on the map he makes sure his marines actually heal up all right so now Clem's going to try to take his fourth base and Keen seems positioned to make sure he can do something about it if I was like stim on in they're going to get something before picking up going home or actually aggressing further into the natural. And oh, Keen's going to find this as well. That's good. Dead medevac, a dead two, dead three, dead four. Uh, that's pretty damn expensive. And that just forces more starport time. As again, Keen is just playing out of his freaking mind in this, in this bracket. Clem, the TPT is not his best matchup, to be sure. But it is not, it is not bad. And he definitely can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. He took a game off Maru. Keen is just making him look. It looks like it's a mid GM player playing against Clem. Just everywhere he needs to be. Now we're going to see him stim on in, trying to knock these tanks down. We have no disables, but the splits, the spreads of the bio, they're going to be fairly easy in the tank season from the backside. But uh, there are more tanks where that came from. Uh, Keen, I'm not sure you wanted to do uh, that one. But there we go. Now there's the upgrade lead. Bio is starting to fall. Not the best fight there for Keen, to be honest. There were still a lot of tanks for Clem. Okay, the bio's gonna stim on it. It's very over stim, so Keen's actually gonna take a pretty good trade with the four or five Marines that he has. And here comes the army once again. Now it is seven tanks to 11. The, again, the I guess Clem went double factory earlier. That is something. Now this third base is just gonna get stimmed upon and SCVs will go down. So they're gonna try to keep things alive, do their best and their best as well is good, but 17 SCVs go down at the end of things keen he is looking dominant here Clem just coming to terms with the fact that he has lost this series 3-0 and keen comes out of nowhere and he wins
Yes, a little open cup. NA number 112. Well played there by the Korean.